What do you get when you take two sticks of dynamite and put it together over an open flame? That's what I wanted to figure out on today's episode of Friction in the Kitchen, where we settled the score between an amateur home cook and the son of a restaurant owner. Two men afflicted with a sick addiction for throwing down in the kitchen. Roll the clip. Michael Katz, he, no, he can't cook. Domenico is gonna get exposed. He's talking all this stuff he can cook and I just don't know. I don't think so, you know? Domenico is a fraud. Then he keeps talking shit and shit and shit and I'm like, I can't do it. You know, I gotta, I gotta talk back. He's a one trick pony. I'm LeBron James over here. And Michael Katz, he's, he's just that D3 college point guard. And Domenico acts like he's better. I want the smoke. You better bring the heat. Oh, hey, I was just cooking something. Come on in. What I'm most excited about for this competition is to show that you don't need to work in a restaurant to have skills in the kitchen. Probably the last three years, I been trying to eat a little healthier and you know whether that's cooking salmon or cooking cauliflower. I cook roughly five to six times a week. I think seasoning is the best part of life. Something that I know my competitor Domenico is gonna skimp on. Domenico and I's relationship has been that of a, uh, a bit tempestuous. I'm sure Dome will tell you he had some perfect story of how he made a from scratch pasta the first time he ever cooked and that's all well and good but it's not true he's always been quite the braggart about his job his cooking prowess domenico is that of a friend and that of an enemy you keep your enemies close your friends closer and your friend enemies in a cook-off I'm not a line cook. My, my dad doesn't own a restaurant, but I'll tell you what, I cook with heart, and I cook with love, and I cook with passion. You don't, you don't cook with love. If you're cooking 80 dishes a night, there's no way you have enough love to put in all 80 of them. I put love into everything I make. I'm going to win this because Domenico is a fraud, but when it comes down to it to show skill, he's gonna crumble. And that's why I'm going to beat him. Badly. Very badly. You could never get this at Giuseppe's. Welcome, come on in. Uh, we've been here for about 20 plus years. Um, my parents started this business in 1996. Since then, we've really made a name for ourselves throughout the city. Uh, a lot of people have said we are sort of an institution and not just a restaurant, and I think that's very true. But I really started working seriously in the kitchen when I was about 17, 18 years old, and we were short-staffed. I uh, got thrown into the fire, and since then, I've uh, done every job that we have here. Just in general, my role right now is kitchen manager. I try to see every single piece of food that leaves the kitchen, and make sure it's good. Talk about your relationship with Michael Katz. <laughs> Michael Katz. <laughs> he wants to talk shit. He wants to talk smack, but he, he's not going to live up to it. His plate's going to look like a pile of shit. Mine's going to look like something you get in a restaurant. That's just a fact. He's the underdog. If he wins, he looks great. If I lose, I look bad. It's just that. My dad's a great cook. I've been eating good food since uh, the day I was born, so I feel like my understanding of food is a lot better than his. And so now we're at this point where there's only one thing left to do. After months of anticipation, Michael Katz and Dominic finally came face to face for their long awaited showdown at Dome's apartment in downtown Columbus. Let's just say it didn't take long for tempers to flare. You think. You don't even you know what to do in there. You think I think I'm these things. You don't know what to do in there. 
You can't right. fry an egg. You, 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 you can't even whisk an egg in some oil. You can't even whisk an egg. You can't even whisk Save the friction for the kitchen. Today, the, the theme of our cook-off is new American fare. On my mark, you're gonna have 35 minutes to cook. When I say stop, you cannot touch anything. You're gonna be judged on several categories, including taste, texture, presentation, and creativity. You're gonna be presenting your dish to a panel of three esteemed judges. Any questions? No, let's do it. The new American category gives uh, both contestants flexibility to show off uh, their skills. Uh, they uh, can choose from a wide uh, variety of dishes uh, without kind of getting pigeonholed into either one of their specialties. I know Michael's got a few surprises up his sleeve. I'm going to attempt to catch Dome off guard with a uh, with a drunken late night special, uh, one that any college student would be familiar with, the, the Crunch Wrap Supreme. However, I'm gonna um, elevate it a little bit with some uh, fresh ingredients and some new, some new twists on an old classic. I'm going to make kind of like a deconstructed chicken pot pie, or I was thinking another good name is like a, a pieless chicken pot pie. So I'm gonna have chicken, uh, peas, and carrots, but I'm gonna kind of do it in my own way. There's a big opportunity for Michael to kind of upset expectations. All right, enough with the formalities. Let's see these boys cook. Three, two, one, go. For the first thing I got to do is dice these onions up and get the peppers ready for the fajitas. So first thing I did was uh, I got those carrots going. I tried to get them as soft as I could. We only had uh, 30 minutes, so I knew that was the first thing that had to be prepped. They're gonna be boiled until they're really soft, and then I'm going to saute them lightly with butter, because I just want them to be soft and buttery. Don't tell him, I think those carrots are a little rotten. Um... The main thing to it is the chicken, and if the chicken's not cooked, well then you're, you've lost, you know. 35 minutes. I was gonna cook the beef off and use that excess, excess fat to cook the fajitas in. The most crucial aspect is giving everything its own body and flavor so that when you combine everything together, nothing's lacking in any area. Uh, the key is going to be getting enough seasoning to penetrate through that two pounds of meat. It's a lot of meat in a uh, smaller cast iron. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for Michael Katz early on. I had a lapse in judgment to turn down the saucepan and the butter hit the pan and foamed up right away. Amateur. Look at this. Amateur. I had to step in and help the I, I knew what I was doing. I would have, I, I could have, I could have saved it too. Do you think he's intimidated by Dome's professional pedigree at all? Um, I think he likes to say he's not, but he might be. Honestly, it didn't it didn't perturb me any any more than any other slip of wood in the kitchen. I was right back at it. I wanted to get a really nice sear on the both sides of the chicken and throw it in the oven uh, once I was satisfied with the way it looked is to just get that uh, seared kind of you know, brown Maillard reaction flavor on everything. I wasn't trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, I had a strong base and just some extra things to, to elevate it. To, Guys, we got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left. I'm really wanting to get a good color on those onions and those peppers so that they can stand stand out as a side dish. <laughs> and then the peas, it was easy. Just threw that in the food processor with some cheese and seasonings. And um, I was kind of doing that while I was watching the chicken and the carrots at the same time. Kind of looks like baby food, but it's good. 
I wouldn't pick the ingredients he picked. I think he has way too much going on. Way too many, like, ingredients. I've seen what he brought. I don't think it's gonna be that good. He doesn't stand a chance. He doesn't know what he's doing. Katz may have had the more complex dish, but his Crunchwrap Supreme was taking shape while Dominic's chicken was going in and out of the oven. I'm making sure to toast the tortilla so that it's malleable. It's a little bit of a architectural feat, if you will, to get all these soft and creamy and uh, unctuous things all in, in one envelope. Gentlemen, we got five more minutes. Through whatever experience I have cooking chicken, just the searing and the amount of time it was on the stove and in the oven, I was pretty confident that it was cooked. Uh, but that is such a big factor in the dish I was making. When it was coming down to the wire, I tried to give myself a little uh, cushion of at least a, a minute or so to finalize anything and put some things in the right place. You think 35 minutes is so much time, but then when you're actually out there doing it, it, it flies by. When shit hits the fan, or when you just need to speed up or something's not going the way you need to, relax. Guys, there's one minute left, one minute left. Take a deep breath, you get your mental together. And so that's what I was doing. All right, time's up. Put it down, put it down. So I'm really happy with how the chicken turned out. I'm happy with what I put out there. It was what I wanted. Michael Katz was up first to present his food to the esteemed panel. You'll have your Crunchwrap Supreme made with a homemade beer cheese sauce. And you have rustic guacamole on the side, as well as fajitas as a side dish. It can be eaten with a fork, but I suggest picking it up with your hands and taking a bite for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, I like that you went with something personal. Um, I think it's interesting to uh, try to interpret a dish that we're all familiar with. Um, uh, kind of uh, a hipster chef move to uh, try to put a twist on Taco Bell. There is um, not much to separate it from a traditional crunch wrap, but honestly, that's why I like it. That's why I think it's pretty good. Um, it mimics it pretty well. Peppers and onions on the side, while not bad at all, do seem like somewhat of an afterthought. Uh, my only recommendation, it's a little much too much cream um, in the beef. Um, I really like it. I thought it was seasoned well enough. Um, maybe a little bit more seasoning, a little less cream. Thank you, Chef Marcus. Overall, I would say uh, a good showing. Uh, you uh, managed to put together a fairly complicated dish in a pretty uh, brief period of time. Thank you, Chef Hammer. I thought it was great. Better than Taco Bell. It tasted like a little bit healthier, maybe, less greasy, which my bowels thank you. Um, lots of colors on the plate. There's good char on the crunch wrap. Um, so yeah, nice work. Thank you, Chef Leah. <laughs> Next, the pressure was on Dominic to sway the judges after Michael Katz's first impression. It is a bone-in, skin-on chicken thigh. I think it's the most flavorful way to do chicken. The carrots are boiled and I sauteed them lightly in butter. So I want them to just be simple. The pea puree is peas with pecorino romano cheese and a little bit of olive oil. Fucking slaps. Thank you. So good. Thank you. Um, I really liked the pea shit. Yeah. I ate all of it, as you can see. Um, I thought the idea of a deconstructed pot pie was really fun, fits in with the theme well, so 
very good job. All right, Dom, I thought this was an absolutely amazing dish. Um, as far as baked chicken goes, this might be some of the best baked chicken I've had. I think it was a brave move to go with a bone-in uh, piece of chicken. I personally would have been nervous that maybe it wouldn't have cooked in time, uh, but it looks cooked through pretty well. As far as the whole pot pie concept goes, there was a lot missing from it. Uh, maybe a little bit more gravy, something to make me think of a chicken pot pie more rather than just baked chicken. I think if you had more time, probably could have done something a bit more interesting with the carrots. After tasting each dish, the judges needed time to think over their final decision. Michael Katz really surprised me with the whole crunch wrap thing. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I also wasn't expecting him to be as good of a chef as he really was. Um, but the professionalism of Dome's meal and um, plating uh, was almost far superior. Um, doesn't mean it tasted better. Nothing more American than Taco Bell, if you ask me. So, I don't know. It's gonna be a tough choice. Uh, overall, a good showing, I think, from both of them. Um, and I suppose we can only pick one. The judges have all said their piece. Now it's time to bring the cooks back out to deliver the results. Well, gentlemen, it was a long, hard battle. You both performed admirably in the kitchen today. And the judges, they're all impressed, but it was a long, um, a long deliberation, but I think we've come to a consensus decision. Dominic, Michael Katz, it's been a pleasure to set this up and have you two do war, but there can only be one winner. And Michael Katz, you are not the winner. Dominic's deconstructed chicken pot pie landed him a 3-0 sweep with the judges, and Katz's Cinderella run stopped before he got to the ball. I'm so happy I won. Now I can I can sleep tonight comfortably. Dom just got the best of me. I guess he does cook sometimes. He's all right. I mean, the judges did seem a little tipsy. It's fine. I, I respect the decision. And I was worried Michael Katz was going to show up with some like really good ingredients. So when I saw his set of ingredients, I was very happy. I was like, man, he's not talking to me today. I'm not going to sit here and, and say, you know, he cheated or anything. He didn't cheat, but, uh, you know, i just not used to cooking in this type of environment. Michael Katz isn't down for the count. Better than the food they cooked is the fact that the feud between friends could finally be laid to rest. I won. That's it. We're cool. So there's no hard feelings anymore? No. I don't know how he feels, but for me, I'm chilling. For a few minutes, anyway. And I had to tell you the rules. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down.